Rasha da bala te ta 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 bala bo 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 ba ba te. Siya ko velente la kumbra bashki de la kovati te te la bo 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 te ta ya. Ibo bala ste de bali damba. Rabasha to do kova banti li komonte la ki doski va. Ba ta 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 le boroto sabata da ba 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 ta. Nika velando se zeva li bobolan de la kova ski bala. Rushe de brimba borondo ski vele ba 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 ta. What a mighty God we serve. What a time to be alive. To enjoy the blessings of God. The faithfulness and the goodness of God. Viewers all over the world. Wherever you're watching from, I want to welcome you specially to this broadcast again tonight. We are always here every Sunday, 8 p.m. Nigerian time, bringing you God's word, bringing you meat in due season, bringing you the mind of the Spirit, teaching the word of God and bringing you prayers and prophetic declarations for you, for your family, for your loved ones, for your business, for your ministry and all that concerns you. Once again, if this is your first time, my name is Bankoli Abiyoye and I am your host on this broadcast. I trust the Lord that your life will never ever remain the same. In the name of Jesus, I want you to quickly do something as our culture is to share the link of this video, share to your WhatsApp groups, share to your Facebook groups, share on your messenger, share on your telegram, just share all around and let your friends, let your people know that Reverend is online. And tonight I have something powerful I want to teach to you in the next few minutes. Within the space of time we have, it will bless your life. I will be unveiling to you spiritual growth process. I will be unveiling to you certain keys. I'll be showing you a spiritual map tonight to spiritual growth process that will not only affect your spiritual life, it will affect every area of your life. Your life is about to change. God is about to do something new. Stagnation will be broken in your life tonight. In the name of Jesus, every form of stagnation, physical, spiritual, financial, in whichever area in your career is going to be broken. Your eyes will open. Your life will change. Share the broadcast as we pray father we bless your name i thank you for our brothers and sisters watching all over the world i ask that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened i pray they will find value they will touch virtue take all the glory thank you for utterance i give you praise jesus in jesus name we pray amen if you are watching this broadcast, whoever you are, whether you're a sister, a brother, you're married, you're single, you're a business person, you're into ministry, you you just gave your life to Jesus, or you're you're being in ministry in the work of God, you are watching the right broadcast. You are in the right place, you are on the right platform. In the next few minutes, I will be sharing with you what will change your life forever i want to begin by saying that in life growth is a necessity i'm teaching on unveiling spiritual growth process in life growth is a necessity god wants you to grow on all sides he wants you to grow spiritually he wants you to grow physically he wants you to grow financially he wants you to grow mentally. God wants you to grow. God hates stagnation. God hates stagnation. 
he wants you to grow and he wants you to keep growing so stagnation is not part of our heritage in god i want you to stay with me and understand that god hates stagnation it said in john chapter 15 he said every branch that bringeth forth fruit he prunes it that it will bring forth more fruit and any branch that doesn't bring forth fruit he cuts it up god does not want us to be stagnant now i want to show you growth process because i believe that if your spiritual life is growing correctly every other area of your life will grow in luke chapter 2 verse 40 the bible says and the child grew and became strong in spirit amplified translation filled with wisdom and the grace of god favor and spiritual blessing was upon him and the child grew talking of jesus the messiah he grew god loves growth and you also must prepare your heart to grow you must embrace growth you must be growth oriented and jesus did not only grow spiritually jesus grew physically he grew physically he grew spiritually he grew mentally the bible says and the child grew that's physical growth he became strong in spirit spiritual growth was filled with wisdom and the grace of god was upon him mental growth all around growth you fast forward to luke chapter 2 verse 52 the bible says message translation luke 252 it said and jesus matured growing up both in body and spirit blessed by both god and people jesus grew both in body and in spirit it's important you grow physically it's important to grow spiritually it's important to grow mentally and of course automatically it reflects on your finances and it reflects in several other places i need to say this because physical growth is automatic once you are born you are alive physical growth is automatic even if you decide that i don't want to grow physically you will still grow whether you like it or not you will still grow you see that's why whether you are growing in other areas of your life your age is still counting your age is going physical growth is automatic but you see spiritual growth and mental growth are not automatic they must be stimulated mental growth spiritual growth must be it has to be intentional it has to be deliberate it has to be strategic it has to be systematic and cumulative in nature if this is not done a day will come you will get to some point where you will be stuck in your group and you will know that you are stuck just as several persons are watching me several persons are listening to me and you know that right now you are stuck in your growth you know that you are stuck in your growth process and that's why tonight i want to show you i want to unveil to you two powerful keys two powerful points in your growth process as you grow in life as you grow mentally as you grow spiritually you see most times it's not enough to embark on a journey you must have the road map you must have the map of your journey you must know how to navigate your pathways because these are very crucial matters these are very crucial things in your spiritual growth so here is the map i want to unveil to you having uh, established that god wants you to grow spiritually having established that god wants you to grow mentally having established that god is not averse to growth now let's look at this there are two maps two points in your spiritual growth process there are two points you must not miss there are two points in your spiritual growth process number one is discipleship the second point 
is leadership write that down the first point in your growth process is discipleship the second point is leadership now let me say this quickly to bless you there are about four ways a believer grows every believer that will mature and will grow correctly grow properly there are four channels of growth for every believer i'll measure maybe two or three that will be a blessing to you number one way we grow is through the acts of piety through the acts of piety when you pray when you study the word when you fast you go for evangelism you give you fellowship with the brethren you will experience some measures and some dimensions of growth through acts of piety the second layer of growth the second channel of growth is via discipleship that's why when jesus came to the earth one of the first things he did was that he recruited disciples you see if all you do is have your personal time with god have intimacy with god and your life is not subjected to discipleship which some people otherwise called mentorship but i believe there's a great world of difference between them it will affect you you grow to a point and you will get stuck most people don't know this discipleship is the next channel of growth we have the third which is service that's why last week i did a teaching on walking with god and walking for god and i said walking for god begins with walking with god if you walk with god inevitably you will find yourself walking for god walking with god is the beginning it culminates eventually into walking for god walking with god walking with god is like taking in walking for god is like output that's output input and output now i'm saying this to give you a background on the importance of discipleship you see god has commissioned us in the great commission he said we should go forth and disciple all nations by adventure you miss the channels of growth which i mentioned the first time acts of piety number one discipleship number two and number three service but that's not what i'm dealing with today so that you can have it and just know any area you're missing out you see a lot of persons are stuck i keep meeting people all around here and there and they keep saying i want to grow i don't know what's the problem what's going on with my spiritual life what's going on in my work with god and when we check we run a diagnosis on them you discover that they are stuck on one of these areas and many don't know you see discipleship is one of the ways the most accurate ways god has established for us to learn christ discipleship is god's training scheme for his children you see when children grow up he send them to school in god's design god's school one of god's school aside the secret place is discipleship where people subject their lives to learn christ either directly or indirectly and let me quickly say this for act for a discipleship to be accurate there are four things you must learn i'll give you maybe about two so we don't digress from our assignment today in discipleship number one you learn you learn christ you learn christ that's the first curriculum for discipleship you learn christ the second thing you learn in discipleship you learn character so you see when the man says he is is in discipleship relationship with the lord and he has enrolled into god's training scheme and he's not learning character something is wrong in the same way under discipleship let me just add one you learn career you cannot be properly adequately discipled and be confused about your career because a part of what we do in discipleship we prepare people for their career also accurate discipleship 
has forces that it delivers to its to its participants. But you see, when you begin your journey, you begin it with discipleship. But you see, it ends in leadership. That's where I'm headed. Now, let me show you a scripture. My God, Salakovlebeda. If you have been blessed tonight, just put it in the comment section and say, I'm blessed. Put it in the comment section, say, I'm blessed. You have not shared this video, hit the share button. Share, share, and you see, over time, I see a lot of us sharing the videos. The Lord will bless you because you are sharing the knowledge of the glory of God. You are sharing the visitations of God. You are sharing the fire of God. You are sharing the encounters. You are giving the Holy Spirit the platform to reach out to more lives. And I tell you, lives have been blessed. While I begin to tidy up the teaching tonight, I'm going to give five minutes for questions. Para adventure, you have a question, you drop it in the comment section. I will attend to it right here and now. I don't want you to wait until when we are closing before you drop your question in the comment section. You have a question, drop it in the comment section. I think we get it across to me right here and now, and I will attend to it. And also, I will have the privilege to prophesy and pray over you, pray over your week, and bless you by the Spirit of God. So, I want you to stay with me. In the next few minutes, the will be done. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. The contemporary English version, CEV translation. Jesus said unto them, Follow me. I will teach you how to bring in people instead of fish. Jesus said to them as he recruited them, he said, follow me, and I will teach you how to bring in fish instead of people. The easy to read translation, easy ERV, said, Jesus said unto them, come, follow me, and I will make you a different kind of fisherman. You will bring in people, not fish. Jesus was recruiting the people into discipleship and he showed them the end point is going to be leadership he said you will bring in people the entry point is discipleship the other end is leadership you see a lot of times we move in our work with god not knowing that at some point discipleship must translate into leadership development in discipleship we learn christ we learn character we learn how to work with god god works in our heart we develop a personal relationship with the holy spirit in which he molds our lives in which he pours himself into us in which christ is being formed in our heart you see you can accept jesus into your life in one day but Christ cannot be formed in your life in a day. You accept Jesus in a day, but Christ is not formed in a day. One of the process that ensures that Christ is formed in your life, in my life, is discipleship. But you see, at some point, as we move and advance in our discipleship relationship with God, it brings us into leadership development. He said, follow me. That's discipleship. We are following Christ. We are partnering our lives after Christ. We are allowing Christ to grow in our spirit and to take over every facet, every area of our lives. But see, that's not the end. The end is as we move, we begin to move into discipleship. Now, here's what I'm saying. When you see a believer stand before you, you see, when he stands before you, that's discipleship. When you see his back, that's leadership. The believer has two sides. The front side is discipleship. He's following the Lord. The back side of the believer is leadership. He's leading the people. 
He is bringing people in just as Jesus promised. You see, most times we are so engrossed in discipleship, in discipleship, which is wonderful. But see, there comes a time of transition where the backside of the believer must be developed. And if the backside is not being developed properly, after a while, he runs into crisis. After a while, he becomes stuck. You see, when it comes to leadership development, it has some complexities. If leadership development is quite complex, unlike discipleship, it's quite complex. And it has complexity and it has skills. So we have a, a lot of believers who are anointed, talented, but with little or no leadership development. You see, in leadership development, you not only put Christ into that person, but you help the person find out who he is in Christ and equip him with the skills, with the knowledge, with the competence required for him to manifest Christ in the uniqueness of what God has put on his inside. If you are with me, put in the comment section and say I'm with you. I want to be sure that I'm not losing you. You see, let me say this as I tidy up. Now, if you have your question, you can put it in the comment section. Let me say this quickly. The anointing is a very, very powerful virtue. Very powerful. But you see, you don't use the anointing to do everything. I look around today and there's a gap. But in the secular world, there's a leadership gap. In church, there is, there is a leadership gap. People come to church, come for fellowship, and don't discover themselves. Some don't even discover Christ, not to discover who they are in Christ. These things cannot just be delivered like that. They can, they can only be delivered on the basis of leadership. The leadership development, the leadership skill of the average believer is all time low. And you see, it will affect our result. You see, the anointing is so powerful that you can never use the anointing to do the things the anointing was not designed to do and still get some results. It's so powerful. So, so today, we need to know that yes, we have to be anointed. We have to walk in the grace of God. But see, if we will permanently mold the generation, our leadership development, our leadership skills must be intact. In fact, one of the provisions God has given to us to excel, to succeed in our leadership is the anointing. One of the powerful tools a leader must have is the anointing. But you see, there is a, a wide gap between the anointing and leadership. And you see, you, 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 you don't enter into leadership by, by the anointing. You enter into leadership by training. Anybody can become powerful as you work with God, as you spend time with God. But you see, leadership comes by training. That was why Moses, with all the encounters, God ensured that Moses was discipled. He was discipled in Egypt. He was also discipled under Jethro, the priest of Midian. He had his personal encounters with God that molded him. No wonder he was a great leader. He led one million persons out of Egypt. The Bible says, by a prophet, he brought them out. And by a prophet, they were preserved. But it wasn't just by the anointing. Moses had leadership skills. When you study Moses' life, you discover at some point, Jethro came in and gave him a leadership counsel. At some point, the Holy Spirit inspired him and told him, say, choose 70 elders that will stand with you. He said, and I will take off the spirit that is in Moses. That's leadership. So, discipleship, the front part is discipleship. He's following the Lord. The back part is leadership. He's leading people. Can I ask you? Are, are you stuck in your work with God? Where have you been stuck? 
Is it in your discipleship development or your leadership development? So we have the other set of persons who want only the leadership development. They just want all this discipleship thing. I don't want it. Working with God, keep it aside. Learning under a more mature minister places aside. You see, if you omit the discipleship training and go for the leadership, all you will have is skills. And the life of Christ will not be in you. The anointing will not be evident because it is in discipleship we take root. It's in leadership we bear fruit. We take root in discipleship. So you can't jump discipleship and say, keep discipleship aside. Let's go for leadership. No. Or on the other way around, you can't just say, oh, I love discipleship. I want to love about, uh, learn about Christ. I want to grow in Christ likeness. I want to grow in my character, grow in my calling. And you now forego forfeit leadership. You will be as one who has taken in but is not giving out. And after a while, you will be in crisis. I want to challenge you. You're watching this video. God has opened you up to discipleship. Do not take your leadership development for granted. Do not. Otherwise, you will be stuck and everybody looking up to you at one point or the other would also be stuck and you would not have the answers to give to them. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray for you. I want to bless you with it. I want to speak over your spiritual life. I want to speak over your finances, over your marriage, over your health. But before I do that, if we have any question in the comment box, Let's bring it on so we could provide answers by the Spirit of God as the Lord is going to help us to uh, anyone with questions. You have a question, you put it in the comment section. I'm about to pray for you, so don't go. I'm about to speak into your life. And if you have not shared this video, you're just coming in, you're just joining. I want you to make sure you go back uh, when the broadcast is over. And listen to what I have just taught. Unveiling spiritual growth process. Very powerful teaching. You will not be stuck. The people under you will not be stuck. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, um, in the absence of questions, I want to say a word over your life. I know this. If I pray for you, your life will not remain the same. When I call upon God over your life, heaven will hear i know that so i want you to release your faith i've received testimonies all around the world god answers prayer and i'm going to bless you i'm going to bless your week this work we do every sunday here from this platform so if you are set to receive as i make the declarations i want you to say an amen and i want you to type it in the comment box to show you are in agreement father in the name of jesus i pray for my viewers i pray for my brothers i pray for my sisters i pray for everyone connecting fathers children mothers i ask your hand be upon them i pray that like never before the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. I pray that you will see correctly. I pray that the visions of God will be upon your spirit. I pray that your walk with God will become stronger and stronger. You will not be stuck in the name of Jesus. Everyone watching this broadcast who has been stuck at one point or the other, stagnated at one point or the other, be free in the name of Jesus. I pray, enter your next season. Enter your next level. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release God's blessings upon you. That ministry God is committed, God has committed into your hands. It will flourish. That young man, God is calling forth into an assignment. I pray for you today. Receive boldness. Receive courage. Receive help. Receive it now. 
in the name of jesus your families are blessed your children are blessed your husband your wife your spouse is blessed in the name of jesus i release god's blessings upon them god's blessings upon the work of your hands what that which god has placed in your hands will prosper in the name of jesus in this in the midst of this economic hardship all around the world within the nations i pray that the favor of god will follow you the bible says and the child jesus grew in favor before god and before man receive favor in the name of jesus doors are open unto you over the work of your hands in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone that is sick tonight be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of i rebuke that sickness i rebuke that disease i rebuke that infirmity in the name of jesus in the blood the organs the tissues the systems in the cells be healed in the name of jesus blood diseases muscular diseases bone issues be healed in the name of jesus i release god's anointing upon you now like never before enter into new realms and dimensions into new levels of understanding in the name of jesus in your discipleship process in your leadership development receive help right now in the name of jesus you will not be stuck i rebuke every form of stagnation move forward in the name of jesus move forward in the name of jesus so shall it be oppression is broken oppression is destroyed in jesus precious name your week is blessed this week will be better than last week and so shall it be thank you for joining us tonight if you are led you want to support this broadcast you've been blessed and you want to partner with us you want to sow a seed our account number will be posted on the uh, message on the comment session it's Beulah Land Teaching and Transformation Center and it's Fidelity Bank that's our official account number uh, our account details uh, the account number will be posted and I want you to be a part of what God is doing by sowing a seed being a blessing partnering with us you can also send us a DM and we can talk better. Finally, don't forget to share this broadcast. Don't keep it to yourself. Share to somebody. Let someone hear what has been said tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure having you on this platform. And everyone who has been sharing, sharing to groups, sharing to platforms, we see what you are doing. And the Lord honor you. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are here every Sunday, 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. GMT. We are blessed in Jesus' precious name. So in the absence of questions, we call it a day. Thank you for joining us. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. We have a devotional, daily devotional. You can find us on facebook better christian resources better christian resources the title of the devotional is meet in due season that devotional will also help your spiritual life we are here to bring spiritual resources that will help you keep moving from glory to glory in jesus name i look forward to seeing you again this coming sunday as you connect with us the lord will bless you and the lord honor you in jesus precious name god bless you shalom up.